Okay, so I have here a new project and I created a new basic level, which by default comes with this static mesh here. Uh, it's called floor and it uh, has a static mesh component, which the static mesh is this SM template map floor. And this is kind of useful because it has the dimensions of a thousand by a thousand. And uh, so we'll keep that in mind as we go forward. But what I'd like to do is create a new C++ class based on actor, which can serve as the room. And for now, it's just going to be a floor. We can add walls later if we want to, but for now, it'll just be a basic floor. And we're going to use this actor to spawn items. So we're going to call this a procedural room. Um, so I've saved this level as proc gen map one. And so that's the level we're in. And so I'd like to create a new C++ class. And I'm going to base this off of actor and call it procedural room. So here we have our procedural room actor. And um, I'd like to add a static mesh component to this. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a private section at the bottom. I'm going to make a U static mesh component and call this floor. And I'm going to give it a U property. And let's make it edit anywhere and blueprint read write. Give it a category of room. And we'll make this meta equals allow private access equals true. And the reason for this is we put this in a private section. It's a private variable. Uh, but I want to be able to edit this from within the blueprint. And if you use this meta allow private access to be true, then you can have this variable be private and still be able to alter it from within the blueprint as long as that blueprint is derived from this class or it actually is um, a blueprint of this class, basically. So we have this floor uh, component and uh, we're going to go ahead and create that here in the procedural room constructor. So floor equals, so we're going to use create default sub object and you static mesh component. And I'm going to give this a name of floor component. And I'd like this to be the root component. So I'm just going to go ahead and use set root component. And I'm going to set that to the floor. So here we have our basic procedural room. And we have our floor. We're going to basically set this floor to um, a static mesh asset. We'll do that in the editor. Uh, there's no need to hard code that. And, uh, you know, that makes it a little bit easier if we want to change it out later. Um, so we've, we've got this basic actor. And what I'd like to give this procedural room the capability to do is to spawn an actor. And for now, we're going to simply spawn a chair. And so we need a variable uh, that represents the class we want to spawn. Now, if we want to create a class or even a blueprint, we can do so. And then we can have a variable here in C++ that references that, that, that blueprint or that class, and we can spawn it. So why don't we go back into the editor here, and uh, we'll go ahead and create a new blueprint. I went ahead and created, right-click, new folder, a blueprints folder and I'm going to create a new uh, blueprint class based on actor and I'm going to call this chair BP, BP for blueprint and double click on that. I'm going to go ahead and add a static mesh component and for this I'm going to call it chair component and for the static mesh I'm going to go ahead and type in chair and now we have a chair and uh, we can go ahead and drag this onto the default scene root. That way we can uh, let the chair static mesh component be the root. I'm going to compile and save that. And there we have our chair. So basic actor, um, you know, it's pretty simple. 
And what I'd like to do now is simply come back into the C++ class and add ourselves a variable uh, that we can uh, use that references that blueprint class. And a, uh, to do that, we can use t sub class of. So t sub class of, uh, we'll make this a private, private variable. So t sub class of, it's a template and it needs a class. We're gonna just simply choose actor. And let's call this chair class. And we'll go, go ahead and give this the same U property as the floor, so that way we can edit this. And so this gives us a, uh, a variable um, pointing to a blueprint, basically. And we're, we're going to have to set this on the blueprint once we make one from procedural room. And so we're going to go into the editor. And um, I'd like to go ahead and create a blueprint based on our procedural room class. So let's right click, create a blueprint. I'm going to put it in the blueprints folder. I'm going to call this procedural room BP and create blueprint class. So here we have this and um, it looks like the default scene root is still here. We set, remember the floor to be uh, the root component. Um, so uh, here you'll see in the constructor we set root component to floor, uh, which means that we've got um, some changes that aren't aren't um, updating in the in the editor. So what I'd like to do is click save all and close out the editor, and then we'll just simply compile from code with Control F5, and that'll rebuild and uh, hopefully update some of these properties in the editor. Okay, so here's our procedural room blueprint, and here's our floor component, so now it's updating. So for our floor, first of all, we can go ahead and, and choose uh, the static mesh. And now here we have in the world this static mesh, it's called SM template map floor. I'm gonna use that. So here in procedural room, I'm gonna say template map floor, and I'm going to select that, and here we have the floor. So I'm going to save that, and then before I close this out, I'm going to click procedural room self, and you'll see in the room category the chair class. Now remember this was the um, T sub class of variable here, and T sub class of, if you're not familiar with it, allows you to select a class from within blueprints and uh, this chair class variable will reference that class. So here in the blueprint, I'm going to go ahead and select a class here, and I'm going to choose that chair BP that we created. So that way we have a variable that references the chair BP uh, blueprint. So I'm going to close that out, and we can go ahead and delete this basic mesh here. And we can drag in procedural room BP, and I'm going to take this actor and I'm going to set its world coordinates to 0, 0, 0. So that way we have our procedural room at the origin and its center is exactly at 0, 0, 0, which is what we want. Okay, so back in our project, uh, since now we have a chair class variable which references a blueprint, um, we can now uh, spawn an actor. So first, why don't we just create a function that can spawn an actor. So we'll make this void and call it, let's just say spawn item. And because we don't want to use the spawn actor function because there's already a function called spawn actor and we don't want to confuse the two. So let's say spawn item and this will take the item to spawn. Now I'm going to use the class U class. It's going to be a pointer, and I'm going to call this item to spawn. So U class is the class type of a variable that references a blueprint, basically. And T sub class of A actor is compatible with that because chair class, because it's a variable that references a blueprint, it's compatible with U class. And so um, when we call this spawn item, we could pass in chair class and it, it will work perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and give this function a definition. So here we have spawn item. 
and uh, we can go ahead and come in here and for spawn item we can spawn an actor and so what I'd like to do is uh, call a the function spawn actor from get wor from the world so get world ret returns a u world object which is the world and it has a function called spawn actor now it's a template function it requires a type and we're going to simply use the type a actor so this is very general this can spawn basically any actor and uh, there's several overloads here we're going to use one that takes a u class so we're going to say item to spawn and you'll see now that we have one of the overloads that uses the u class now if i go up one you'll see that there's an overload that takes a u class a location and a rotation. So we can simply just use a zero vector f vector with 0.f passed in that just creates a vector with all zeros for its components. We can do the same thing with an f rotator that takes a zero rotator which is basically a rotator of all zeros. So this is just a basic um, function that's going to spawn an actor based on whatever U class we pass in at the origin with a zero rotation. So if we want to call this from say begin play we can do so. We can say spawn item and then we can pass in our private variable chair class as that U class. So let's compile this and why don't we go ahead and see how this works. Okay, we've compiled, so we'll come back into the editor and we'll hit play. And here we have our chair spawned exactly in the center at the origin, the origin of the world really, and it has a zero rotation. Now, because the world has its x-axis direction, positive x, pointing away, that's why the chair, when you spawn it, is pointing away because the chair is facing its own forward direction, its own x vector, which is aligned to the world because its rotation is 0, 0, 0. Now if we want our, if we want the forward direction to face us when we start the game, well we can simply take this player start and move it over here and rotate it around by three, by 180 degrees. And just by the way, the reason I'm, uh, when I press play, I just get this default pawn here is because I have um, the, in the world settings, I just have this first person game mode uh, selected for the game mode. This is just the basic game mode that comes with this project. And for the default pawn class, I have default pawn selected. And that's just this default that you can fly around in the world with. So that allows us to just start the game and, you know, start where the player start is and see what's going on. So every time we play, we get this chair spawned in the middle of the room and it doesn't, doesn't ever change because there's no element of randomness in this. So the next video, we're going to add some randomness so that we can spawn the chair at a, a random location and rotation in the room. So we'll see you in the next video.